In this video, I'm going to show you seven ways to create teabag collage papers and make sure you stay to the end to see the result of my mad experimenting. Hello, my name is Katherine Rains. I'm a mixed media collage artist and welcome to Tune In Tuesday, where I share weekly art demos to expand your mixed media toolbox. If you see value in my art demos, I would deeply appreciate a thumbs up and if you would subscribe to my channel below. Links for all the supplies to make these papers are down below under show more. And you might also want to check out my free five day online workshop where I teach you how to make all the collage papers taught during Tune In Tuesday to make fabulous collages the very first try. So let's get into creating collage papers with tea bags. So I gathered all of my tea bags in the house, which I have quite a few. And I got everything from, this is a herbal, herbal. I got some black teas. And I also got this very cool tea. It's butterfly pea. This gives you purple tea bags. And red, red gives you red tea bags. So I actually took the tea bags, just seeped them in hot water. So I just brewed them and then I dried them. It's pretty easy to open these up. Now, with the ones that have a string on them, they're stapled or they're, this one actually has a little bit of a hide, so it's not a staple at all, but you just undo this, just open it up, and it, it very easily unfolds here and you just dump the tea. So it'll look like this when I flatten it out. The ones that I would call a pillow one, I just cut one side like this, and I very gingerly open it up on the sides, on both sides. And again, I'm just gonna dump the tea out and the end result looks something like this. So it's just, it has a hinge, um, but it's still a very, very cool tea bag. So here are all the different colors of tea bags that I basically harvested from those tea bags I showed you. This one's the red rubabose. So you get a really nice dark color. This is a black tea. You get a lot of color. Now I generally take the strings off, but I know a lot of artists that really actually like keeping the strings on and they'll actually incorporate that string into the artwork itself. So that's an option. This is a green tea. They're, you know, much, they don't have much impression, but they still have their place in the kind of work we're going to be doing. And I think this is pretty gorgeous. This is the butterfly pea. I am not using purple in my palette, so I'm not going to make a bunch of these. But if you are using purple or if you want to glaze this to make it in your color palette, that would work as well. But I think that's absolutely stunning, particularly with the beautiful markings it makes. This one, I believe, is an herbal tea. So I've got a really nice variety of tea bag papers to do our different projects with. And I'm going to show you at least eight different ways to use these tea bags. One of the simplest versions of tea bag art is to stamp on them. Now I've collected a bunch of simple stamps. Now I don't do a lot of stamping, but I really like ones that have words on them. This has uh, musical notes. So I've got a number of ones with words that look really cool when you stamp on them onto tea bags. It's really the primary way that I use stamps. So I'm gonna take an acid-free ink pad. In this case, I'm gonna use jet black. I know this is probably the wrong way to do this, but I will actually spread this on here. Now I've been told that this actually hurts my ink pad, but I get a much better coverage if I do this. And so far my ink pad seems fine. So the, the way you get the best impression with this is you lay your stamp down, put this on top of it, and then hold down your tea bag and you just roll this on top. Yeah, that is beautiful. So I will do the same on the bottom with that one. Let's try another stamp. This one is a really nice full stamp. I'm thinking, let me try gold on this. I'm gonna do the same thing. Take the gold and see if I can rub it on here. I could also just stamp it like that, but I don't get as much coverage when I do that. And I really want a lot of ink on this stamp. So for those of you who are stampers, I apologize for doing it. The, not the perfect way, but it works for me. Put the stamp down. This one is good because I'll get full coverage. Hopefully it'll work. And again, I'm just gonna roll it. I don't wanna roll back and forth. I wanna roll in one direction each time I go. 
because the tea bag is quite delicate. I don't want to hurt it. So pull this up. Oh goodness. It's very subtle, but it blends in uh, with the natural impression of this black tea bag. Love that. Just for kicks, let's try one more. I got a nice blue color. Let's see what this does. I've got another full stamp here. Again, I'm just gonna rub. I, I wish this worked just like this, because I know that's better for the the ink pad. But I don't I tend not to get enough ink on here, which is why. But this might work. I know this is a better thing for the stamp itself. So I'll put this on top. I think it works if there's a lot of ink on the pad itself. So maybe the other ones didn't have a lot of ink, which is why it didn't work before. Actually, that is quite gorgeous. Oh my goodness, I may have to make like a dozen more of those. And what's so cool about tea bags is when you place it down on a collage, you know, you're going to get a lot of the impression of the tea bag, but it's also translucent. So that'll be a beautiful piece for a collage. And it's in my color palette. Okay, another version of this is I can take a stencil and I can actually put the stamp on one layer of the stencil and push it down onto the tea bag. So I'm gonna take, this is a teal blue. I'm gonna put a piece of paper down underneath of this. And I take my ink pad and just layer a bit of ink on top of this. And then I'll put this down, get rid of the paper and put this down on top of it. Now, there's two ways to do this. I could just roll this on, but I've actually found, we'll, we'll see what this looks like. A lot of it doesn't come off. However, I'm gonna take, this is a plastic file folder, and I'm gonna gingerly take this up, put it in the plastic file folder, and I'm going to put a book on top of it and let it kind of like let the ink seep into the tea bag and we'll see what happens. If it all goes well, a really beautiful impression will be left onto the tea bag. So I'll show you what that looks like, however long it takes. Probably take a couple hours for that impression to make. So I've mixed up a bit of my color palette, my, my red and my yellow on the side here. And I'm gonna take another stencil and literally paint on top of the stencil. Then, now that's nice by itself, but I'm just going to put another piece of paper down to keep my work surface relatively clean if I can. And I will, I'm actually going to take a couple tea bags. This is one of the pillow tea bags. This one I think is an herbal, and this one is, uh, I think this is a Rob Rob Robobo, so it has more of a color to it. And put this on top, top of it, and then roll. So the paint is getting rolled onto the tea bag. Pull this up and then pull the tea bags off. Ooh, I love that. And now that that's in my color palette. That is just beautiful. Let's look at the other one. Yeah, and I like the subtlety of this, you know, so it has it's not completely covered. Looks somehow like the tea bag was actually made that way. So love these. So for the next one, I'm gonna use one of these plastic file folders and I'm gonna put a tea bag on it. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just lightly, lightly spray this. So I just wanna spread the water on to this. So it's just slightly damp. So I'm gonna take the paint that I have on the side, I'm gonna water it down a bit because I don't want it full strength the way it is now. So it's gonna be a little watery, add a little more red to that. I'm gonna add some more water. I want it to be kind of watercolorish in consistency. So if you watercolor, this would be really nice because I want it to kind of seep into the, the water I already have there because it kind of naturally spreads. So one version of this is I could just paint the tea bag, just like this. You know, very simply, add a little more yellow to it, just colorize the tea bag, which I think is lovely. I don't have to, I can leave some of this little hole, like little peep holes, which I think is kind of cool. So that alone is really cool. So I'll just take this up to dry. 
think that's really, really very pretty. I'll show you that when, once it gets dry. So another version of this, I'm just going to lay this down right in that little the water I already have. Spread out the... So now the paint that was already on there is giving a kind of a very light, almost like a watercolor effect, which I actually think is quite stunning. I don't think I'm going to add much to it. Just maybe a little bit. Because it already has water on it, it's going to spread naturally. So let's add a little bit. It's going to spread in some of those natural creases like right there. I think it's really very pretty. I kind of want to leave it just like it is. So I, <laughs> I think this is pretty right there. So I'm going to take this up. So let me show you another one. Um, so I'm going to spray this down a little bit. Again, I'm going to wet it down. And I, I like that there's some creases here. I'm not trying to spread it out flat so that my, my paint here will kind of, it won't go into all the creases and it will actually highlight the creases, which I love. I'm gonna get my water, my paint a little more watered down. Yeah, because I really want it to kind of spread organically as opposed to me just painting it on. But for this, what I'm about to do, I do want a pretty good coverage on this one. So add a lot of water. What I'm going to do is take a stencil, place it on here, and now I am going to close the folder up. And I'm going to put a book on it and let this completely dry. Now this might take, naturally, it could take a day. So I'm going to put this aside. And when it's dry, I'll show you what happens. But a, a beautiful impression of that stencil will hopefully show through. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with this stencil and see what we get. Again, water it down, spread the water out. So we got water all over it. And the water, putting the water on it just helps the paint to spread when I put the paint down. Now I'm only doing this in one set of colors. It's basically my warm colors, only because I've got a lot of color, a lot of papers I've already made in my cool colors. I've got lots of teals, blues, greens, because I did all of Collage Kickstart in those colors. So I don't have near as many colors or papers in the warm colors, which is why I'm doing the tea bags in these. I don't do all colors for every paper. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna fold it over and wait till that dries completely, which again will probably take 24 hours. In fact, I'm gonna just push this a little bit because some of that paint will actually spread, which I think might make it even more interesting. So the last one I want to show you is probably the simplest one of all. Do is take a couple of these Statler pigment pens. Um, these are 0.5. Really, you can have any kind of pens at all. I just like these two colors, and they're in my color palette. I could also use a black. I could use any kind of really kind of fine tip pen. Uh, but the markers work really well uh, because it'll go really nicely through the tea bag without hurting the tea bag. So I'm gonna just doodle on the tea bag. The way I'm gonna doodle is I'm gonna, just gonna start making triangles, which is a shape I really like. The ink itself is gonna bleed a bit, which I think is really pretty. If I used a ballpoint pen, it wouldn't have the same bleed effect. So and I'm just gonna rotate between a red and an orange and just make a whole bunch of little triangles until I fill up a good part of this tea bag. Okay, I have a very cool little tea bag. I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I am dying to use this blue, kind of blue purple tea bag. See if I can make this usable. Not quite my color palette, but it's not not in my color palette either. So let's see if I can make it work. I'm gonna use a black pen instead and just do a little bit larger uh, diamonds. Just make it, make this particular tea bag just a little more interesting. Not that it's not already interesting, because I think this purple color is just delicious. Just wish it was more blue than purple, because that's blue, I'm doing more blue than, really not doing purple, but you know, sometimes you just can't resist. Uh, the paper itself is so gorgeous. 
and I love all of the natural organic dye that came out of the tea with this one. Okay, I think that is really beautiful. Let's see if I can actually fit it into a collage somewhere. So here are two of the tea bags that I left outside underneath a stencil. And let's see if I pull this off. This took a couple days to dry, by the way. And I eventually had to open up the plastic file folder it was in just to speed up the drying process because it wanted to stay wet and protected in this file folder. So I actually wetted this down a little bit just so that it would come off easier. It's got a beautiful impression of the stencil. So that will dry just gorgeously and it's lovely transparent. And then this one ah, is just so beautiful. To learn how to make many more types of collage papers, check out the links that are about to appear right here. And be sure to join my free five-day online class, Collage Kickstart. The link to sign up is under Show More below. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would be deeply grateful if you did. And I'll see you back next week for Tune In Tuesday.